So should XP farming be a thing? In this video, I am allowing one XP farm to just get Anna's level up. This is for a seven man challenge where I'm going to be doing base game, no DLC, seven man. And I'm basically just allowing Anna to hit like level nine, maybe level 10. And Fram will hit level 10 as well. So why am I doing this? So I can easily beat Anna's Paralog and get her to level 7. It takes some time and it's kind of annoying to do, so I'm just doing this for the sake of convenience. Uh, but I'm also just doing this just to get Anna caught up because a 7-man run is going to be crazy. Usually I don't like to do XP farming unless it's absolutely necessary for a run because it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's kind of just like not fun to do at all. You're just sitting there doing some repetitive thing to essentially level up a dude. Uh, in this case, I'll make an exception just to bring her up to speed. I don't really need to do it, but because she's going to be one of the seven units I'm running throughout an entire playthrough, I'm going to be prioritizing XP on certain units. Uh, but in this video, I want to talk about XP farming in general and if it should be in the game. So one of the things about Fire Emblem games is the XP and the leveling. And this can make the game much easier or much harder if you do it or don't do it. And also, if you always do it, <laughs> it can completely reduce the difficulty. So I'm just allowing Anna to catch up to my team. So in this way, I'm not really breaking the game. There are other ways to get a unit to catch up. I'm not going to be doing like infinite XP farms to power level units. This is just to get her started. So I don't think this really breaks the game. But arguably, if you do this on every map and set up tons of XP farms, you could power level units to the point where they will trivialize the game. And if my most recent five-man run taught me anything with the DLC, it's that power leveling even just five units can completely break the game. So I think they need to, like the developers, need to consider game integrity and balance when designing these games. So for example, if I can infinite grind and get a ton of XP to level up, and then I can then, you know, diminish the difficulty, that's not good for the game's balance, in my opinion. Um, arguably it's not good, because instead of focusing on solving problems, it's more of you're, you just have crazy stats. And one of the things I think about, one of the things that I think is an issue for Fire Emblem in general and has been for a while is the fact that if there is any kind of XP farm, like this one right here, <laughs> you can gain an, a huge statistical advantage and it drastically reduces the need for skill. And arguably the game should be about skill, right? Like, I don't think the game should be like chess, where it's rigidly balanced and the pieces have certain moves and that's all they can do. But I do think it would be interesting if the game had less emphasis on stats and more emphasis on player knowledge and skill. I think there's a lot of systems in these games, and while it can be cool, you know, to use all these different abilities and all these different passives, I would actually rather prefer the game be more simplistic, but harder to master. I think in its current form, like Engage and even Three Houses have like way too many abilities. They have too many abilities and there's like too much going on in like moment to moment gameplay. So much so that Three Houses kind of became a meme where you have so many abilities that you're not even going to use like most if, if like any of them. Uh oh, that's a problem. <laughs> that's not what we want. We don't want this guy moving around. He He's like the ruiner of XP farming. <laughs> he's like the ruiner. These two might be able to stack this out. We'll see. But I don't think XP farming should be a thing. Now, for catching up a unit, like let's say you, you want to deploy a unit late, they're underleveled, whatever. I think it's fine for that. That's the only use case where I think it's acceptable. Anything aside from that, like if you're if you're just like power leveling a unit, you're probably going to be breaking the game. 
any kind of power leveling will give you a statistical advantage and will just straight up allow you to... Oh, uh, they're going to kill that villager. <laughs> I should have known that. I accidentally healed him. Let's undo that. Let's let's undo that. Let, let, let's ignore that. Here. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. Dude, Drogos is the man. If you've never played Paladins, on, I'm gonna I'm alright. I'm gonna say something. If you play Overwatch, this might offend you. Paladins is way more fun. I've played both games for around like 500 hours. Paladins has way better, more fun mechanics, in my opinion. Oh no, they still kill her. <laughs> Maybe I should just like let them kill. The, can I? Can the dad die? Oh, I can let the dad die. Well, that would have been useful to know. All right, you go here. I have to prevent them from being able to stack things. I kind of want to allow them to hit the dad because I can heal him. He can't heal himself. All right, but yeah, Paladins. <laughs> this is completely off topic, but Paladins has. Some mechanics like Drogo's Fireball, that's a lot like the Shock combo from Unreal Tournament, except it's with projectiles, and it's pretty sick. And you can also like AOE juggle dudes with it. They're attacking me now. It's rude. All right, the dad's gonna heal me. Fine. <laughs> They're attacking me. <laughs> no, don't attack me. Attack him. What are you doing? Uh, I guess I'll go. I think they're going to stack out this villager now, so we'll see. Unless I put Fram here, she can't really... Let's see what they do. Surely they'll prioritize attacking helpless villagers. Nope, they love the chain attack. Alright, now they don't love the chain attack because I killed them. I do like that there are stupid little things like the dad healing that messes up this farm. Like, at least there's that. So I'll give them some credit forward doing that the weird thing is i think if i go here they'll attack me instead of attacking the villager which makes no sense at all because i'll deal damage to them let's let's test this theory this is just a game theory all right but getting back on topic um xp farming like one of the things i've been thinking about a lot lately especially after doing this five man run and it's not uploaded yet it's all it's finished by the way it's just not up it's i'm gonna be making like two to three of the videos live a day um so one of the things I quickly learned is how crazy stats are. Like, just having stat advantage drastically reduces the difficulty of literally all of the maps in the game, including the final map, which really surprised me. Like, obviously, I knew it would make it easier, but I didn't realize how much easier it would be. All right, please attack the, please attack the dad. Please attack the dad. Attack the, no, he's going to heal the villager. <laughs> he runs out of heals, but <laughs> just want them to attack the dad. Or maybe if I like, box him in, so that way he can't like move around. All right, I'm trying. I'm trying to prevent the dad from moving around too much. I guess I'll have to wait for his his heels to run out. The AI is not very smart though. I might be able to trigger. She can boost defense. Let's chain guard too. Let's make it as annoying as possible to attack this villager. Oh yeah, you can't chain guard allies. All right, fine. <laughs> All right, now he's gonna get a defense boost from that. Maybe he switches to the dad. Nope, doesn't care. <laughs> he's like, whatever. <laughs> but one of the things I learned from doing this five man run was that the XP I was gaining from the Divine Paralogs, and this is something I thought would be a problem, so it's unfortunate that it was it was correct. The extra level ups from the Divine Paralogs made my units so incredibly overpowered that they could literally just fly into groups of five enemies, you know, like a, a wyvern with no extra defenses and kill most of them on enemy phase. <laughs> so like, I think the game needs caps. So one things, or one things, one thing that Guild Wars has, a game that I used to play a lot, Guild Wars 1, is it has like like bonus caps and modifiers. So for example, if you have a unit that runs faster, the fastest you can run is plus 50%. So it caps at that, and the fastest you can increase your spell casting time is 100% faster. And there's like, there's like limitations on specific modifiers. And I think this game needs that as well. 
Like, I think there needs to be, like, minimum damage. So, for example, if you were to hit zero damage, you should at least hit, like, a one or something. Or maybe a three. So that way, when you attack something, you always deal at least some damage. I think it's really stupid the way the damage formula works, where you're very punished for not having high enough stats. Like, it's literally all... It's Honestly, most of the game is just about stats and building your team to have stats. That's that's most of what Fire Emblem is. It's mostly team building and then it's some strategy. I would say it's like 70-30. 70% 70 70 team building, 30% tactics. And what I would want it to be is the opposite. I would want it to be 70% strategy, 30% tactics. And I think that would be more entertaining to play and to watch. And you could talk about tactics more because most of my videos, honestly, are about like how to min-max units. And that's the because that's the way the game is designed, right? Like if I am going to see success in this game, it's mostly going to be from min-maxing. It's not going to be from tactics. Tactics are going to help for sure. But if you know which units to run, which classes to run them on, which weapons to build, which emblem rings to put on them, which passives to run on them, uh, how to use these abilities at a basic level. If you know, if you just have like the knowledge of who's best on what, what weapons to give, what engravings to use, what emblems to throw on them, how to build like a team comp. If you know these things, the game kind of solves itself. Like, if you just know how to use Lucina Bondage Shield and Corrin Fire, you can beat the game pretty easily. <laughs> as, as long as you build your units correctly. Because, like, one of the things I found in some of my most recent playthroughs that I'm on, like, Chapter 23, I was doing guides, and I was testing things out, and I ran a bunch of momentum builds that honestly are terrible because, like, Lance and Sword Power are better, and I should have just run those. Uh, but one of the things I learned about the momentum builds that they don't really perform and it doesn't really like scale well in the end game early to mid game it seems good but end game forces certain types of builds to be effective either you have really high stats to deal with the crazy end game enemies and that's like almost mandatory so you either have really high stats or you have crazy builds or you have both and having like subpar builds really hurts you in a huge way more so than like bad play which is unfortunate. I mean, the whole concept of soft locking from Fire Emblem is that your team isn't good enough to beat the chapter you're on, right? So, like, if you have a team that can't perform well, you're just at, like, a statistical numbers disadvantage. You just have... You're just lacking in stats. And this game is very much a game about stats, unfortunately. More so than it is about tactics. Now, one game that I would argue that's more about tactics, but is kind of on the easier side... Uh, is Triangle Strategy. I think they did a pretty good job at defining classes, restricting units to certain roles, giving you a little bit of flexibility in your build, not a ton. And that game is like 70% strategy, 30% tactics. Or I'm sorry, 70% tactics, 30% unit building. Maybe even 20%, maybe like 80-20. So I, I would rather it be like that. I think it'd be more interesting if Fire Emblem was more like triangle strategy and that you don't have to worry about unit building as much and like leveling up is kind of just assumed so you don't have to go out of your way to make sure certain units get a lot of kills and snowball and all these other things uh, i think that adds more depth to the game because then you're more focused on how you use the unit specifically and unfortunately in a lot of the fire emblem games a lot of the units can be made into anything right so then Everyone can become everything, so the only units who have unique identity are ones who have unique classes. And that's kind of a problem too. Like, I feel like only certain units should have access to flying, and that would balance the game. Because they've heavily nerfed flyers. They keep nerfing flyers in every iteration of the game. But honestly, I think it's fine if flyers are a little bit overpowered if you only have, like, one or two of them. I think that's totally fine, because then they're, like, super-powered units that you need to use correctly. And I think that's fine as long as it's limited. You can have overpowered weapons in games, you can have overpowered tools in games, as long as they're limited. So for example, uh, well actually Bioshock's a terrible example, maybe Half-Life's a better example. Uh, so in Half-Life 2, for example, you have you know the rocket launcher and it only has, you can only hold three rockets. Because it's crazy, it's crazy powerful. So if you could have like 10 rockets, you could just trivialize most of the game. So the developers know this, so you can only have three. 
Uh, in Bioshock, the grenade launcher can only hold 12 ammo, and then 6 for its utility ammo. Uh, but Bioshock, the crossbow, is the best weapon in the game, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but they tried to balance it, you know? I'll give them credit. They tried to balance it. <laughs> it just... It, balancing is hard. I get it, right? It's not easy to balance a game. You don't know what players are going to figure out. It's a whole thing. So, the XP farming stuff... Maybe they allow it because they know some people want it or some people need it. Maybe that's the case. One of the things I found, though, is sometimes, like, people present arguments where, you know, they'll make an assertion that a certain unit is really good and that unit tends to not be that powerful in general, but because they're doing something like this, then the unit's kind of, like, propped up by it. Uh, some people make that argument about Anna, where, like, she's only propped up. Like, you do have to get her to level up early on. Like, I'm not, I'm not arguing against that that's a thing. You have, I mean, you can run her normally, it just takes her a little bit longer to get going. She can still hit level 10 before chapter 10 pretty easily. You do have to kind of siphon kills into her. But the entire early game, in my opinion, is just about siphoning kills into the units that you're going to be using long term. So I don't know what else you would be doing, if not for that. Looks like I'm not going to be able to XP farm too much more here. I guess I could great sack. I probably should be great sacking. And then getting the emblem energies. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the XP we need. Level 8 is probably high enough to stop doing this. One thing I can do, obstruct also gives XP, so I can just use like an obstruct. That'll probably level up frame to 10. Yeah. Obstruct is a weird one. It seems to be the case that you can power level yourself with Obstruct. So we'll see. I'll have to try that. <laughs> I'll have to try that just for fun. Alright, so Anna can start healing herself. I refuse to cry. She refuses to cry. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about for XP grinding, how it affects the game, game balance and the game design of these games. This is also part of my seven man run where I'm just showing that I routed this map and this is how Anna got to level nine. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up though. Like I'll, I'll show her getting to level nine. So if you want to piece out now, I understand, but I'll still, I'll still find something to talk about. Okay. I actually did do a lot of XP grinding for the skip only runs I did. Those, those are also on my channel if you're curious for the three houses. Fire Emblem Three Houses, Blue Lines skip only, and then Silver Snow skip only. So instead of doing any paralogs or auxiliary battles or monastery or seminar, you're only allowed to rest and skip. Now, at first glance, like when you just think about this, it doesn't seem like it'd be that bad, but it is that bad. <laughs> Essentially, skip only deprives you of a ton of resources. Really, that that's what the challenge was. So it is directly related to this topic. So you were, like, I was forced to do things like this to get class masteries for, like, Death Blow, for Darting Blow. So, let's do this. Let's wait. I'll let Fram heal. But by depriving myself of those resources, I was able to have this huge, like, it was really a, a min-maxing challenge. I don't even want to say it was, like, a tactical challenge, because really it was like, well, how am I going to get Death and Darting Blow? How am I going to you know, level these units up before, you know, certain chapters so that I can class into, you know, Falcon Knight or Wyvern or whatever and get the class masteries without the resources. Really, that's what the challenge became. More so than uh, how am I going to tactically beat these maps? <laughs> it's just funny how it works out. All right, Great Sacrifice is pretty overpowered. Right, I think level 9 is probably good enough. So let's just end this. Level 9 is fine. We can hit level 10 in the next chapter. Alright, we'll kill this guy. So that's it for this one. Uh, definitely like and subscribe if you enjoy these discussion type videos. I'm going to try to do these while doing the 7 man challenge so that way you can kind of watch both. So there's like two things going on at once. Because otherwise, it's kind of like a comedy routine. <laughs> or I try to make it a comedy routine. And I'll, I'll still try to do some of those. Like the pumpkin patch and all this other dumb stuff. Uh, but yeah, thanks for checking this out. Or you can see, it's a kind of like a spoiler, but...
There's the other one. <laughs> All right, there's the... <laughs> All right, thanks for checking this out. Definitely like and subscribe. Feel free to drop a comment as to what you think about XP grinding, and I'll see you in the next one.